I am Bloodhunter. You can call me Bloodhound. Just kidding. But welcome back to Halo the Hobbies. Today's hobby is cosplay. I made Raven's Bite, which is Bloodhound's heirloom from Apex Legends. It was a ton of fun to make. Turned out really good, so I want to show you guys how I did it. And you guys, enjoy the video. Let's get to it. The first step here is gluing the painting sticks together. And I just used regular wood glue for this. After I got glue on each stick, I pinched them together. And a little glue seeped out, so I just wiped it off with my finger. And then I used paper to protect the clamps from getting glue on them. And I ended up actually using four clamps instead of just these two. Now the next step after the glue has dried is drawing the design of the handle in. And I just used a reference image online for this, drawing out where I thought the holes of the handle or the spaces of the handle would be. After I drew the design of the handle, I then used my jigsaw or handheld jigsaw to go and cut out the shape of the handle. Now after cutting with the saw, I used files to help get more exact shape of the handle. And with these files, it helped me be able to get the curves really accurate and get the bevels of the handle more accurate. And I used a few different sizes of files so that I can make sure I got into the little nooks and crannies, especially like these little slits and holes on the handle. This is kind of a tedious process, but I didn't want to use my Dremel because I wanted it to go slow so I didn't make any huge mistakes like a Dremel could cause. And I had to get a little clever here and use a hacksaw blade to really get in this little hole here. Granted, it would have been a lot easier if I had a jewelry saw or some kind of small saw. At the time, I did not have that, so this is what I had and I made it work. Now for some of the outside beveling the handle, I did end up using my Dremel because it helped get it a pretty smooth feeling on the outside parts. Using the Dremel really helped me get a smoother and better angle for these beveled edges. Next, I opened a PDF file of a picture of the axe head and I held the handle up to it just to see about what size it would be on a sheet of paper. And I sized this PDF to the size of a sheet of paper so that I know exactly how big it is going to print out and I can hold the axe, head, the axe handle up to it. After printing the axe head out on a sheet of paper, I cut it up into a couple smaller pieces to make it easier to attach the foam to the axe handle later on. Now for cutting the axe head, I cut it into a couple different pieces. The first line following the feathers of the axe head. I also made a mark of where the front of the axe handle is going to be and I just cut it on the foam straight so that it'll glue straight on and flat when I glue it together. Next I quickly used my Dremel tool to just smooth out the cut edges. Next I cut the paper stencil into further smaller pieces. This one I followed the line of it looks like it's a little grill uh, right where it connects to the axe head right where it starts to bevel. Once I got the bevel cut, I traced it on the foam axe head on each side so I know exactly where I'm gonna bevel. After cutting out the axe head, I realized it was thicker than the handle, and I still had to add that little grill thing on which kind of goes over the handle. Now to make it flush, I added two square pieces of two millimeter foam just to the size of the handle. Then just glued it to the side of the handle right where the axe head is going to go. Now 
Then I cut a yellow piece that went from the edge of where the sharp part starts on the axe head all the way to where the feathers start on the raven head. Then I measured and cut a little triangle to go on the back side of the axe head. Next, I just glued the front of the axe head to the front of the handle and the back little triangle that I just cut onto the back of the axe head. So now I have the general shape. Then I had to go and cut out all of the little grill pieces from the middle of the axe head. Then I traced and cut out those little grill pieces again on the little pieces, the thin yellow pieces that go in the middle of the axe head. Now to open up those grill pieces a little bit more because some of the cuts are a little wonky, I used my heat gun on a really high heat so that I barely had to get close and it melted it just to open up those little gaps a little bit more. Then I just ended up gluing that whole piece on. And that piece just goes over the first part of the axe head and then all over the handle. And a little more soldering to open up those gaps just a little bit more. And I even quickly went over with a heat gun just to seal it all. Next I drew the midpoint on the axe head so that I knew where to taper it to. And I went through and found the midpoint all around the front of the axe head. I didn't have to do this on the back triangle because the bird head is going to be covering it up. Then I just went and connected all those dots that I made of the midpoint. So I had one midline going down the entire axe head and all the top of it. And then I was able to just start cutting it off. I use the knife first to just get a general bevel edge and then I use my Dremel after that to really smooth that bevel out. I even changed heads on the Dremel just to get really into those kind of nooks and crannies that I couldn't really reach with the regular sanding drum. So this one is a grinding bit. To make it look like the axe head was sharpened, I just went back to the regular sanding drum and went over the entire axe head with that. Then I used the 400 grit sandpaper and finally the heat gun to kind of seal up all those little rough spots. Now I noticed a couple splits on the handle so I went back and just fixed this up by filling them in with a little wood glue. Next, I grabbed some foam clay to start the bird head. I just put a thick coat all around the back triangle just to get the shape of the bird head. And then I added each individual feather and kind of blended them in with the rest of the shape. This was a little tedious, but after some time and using some various tools, I ended up getting the shape of the raven's head and making every feathers smoothed in to look like it was just growing out. Once everything was dried, I taped paper around the axe handle so that I wouldn't get the Plasti Dip on that because I only wanted to get the Plasti Dip all over the foam parts and really seal those up. Now since it was the shape of an axe, there was no nice way to lay it down so that the plastic did wouldn't touch anything while it was drying, so I taped it to an old Dr. Pepper can and filled it with a little water. Then I sprayed it with some plastic dip for the first coat. 
to let it dry, I set it aside to where, somewhere where nothing was gonna rub up against it or get touched. Then I made sure to do two more full coats and make sure the entire thing was coated evenly. After the Plasti Dip was dry, I came back inside and used some Kiehl's wood primer just on the handle. I made sure to get a nice even coat all the way up to the axe head. Once the entire handle was coated, I just hung it right over my lamp just on the axe head that was already dry. Now it still had a little bit of a wood grain texture, so I sanded it down to get it a little smoother and used another coat of the primer to help smooth out and fill in those gaps. Now I did forget a step early on, which I wanted to burn in a design that says Blood Hunter, but in runes, and so I just ended up doing this over the primer, and it worked just fine. Once I got that burnt in, I painted using black and silver plaid FX. And to dry, I hung it upside down on a little hanger. Now it was still looking a little too textured than I wanted, so I used some Mod Podge and just painted the entire piece with this Mod Podge to try and smooth it out just a little bit more and make it look more like metal. While hanging it, I got a couple fingerprints on it, so I just brushed right over that lightly after it was already hanging. I ended up sanding that Mod Podge once and putting on another coat just to help it get a little smoother, and after that was done and dried for the second time, then I painted again using that silver and black paint, Plaid FX. For the ratios, I kind of used, it felt like a little bit more silver than black, but I think it was more one-to-one -one ratio. Now I had to end up making my own charms, and I used dowel rods for these. One was 3 8 inch thick, and one was four, 1 4 inch thick, and I just cut through those to get the general shape. Then I used a file to smooth out the edges of them, and I ended up doing that for eight, about 8 more charms. After I got them all, I just kind of sketched on a little design and use my wood burning tool kind of to kind of engrave it and make the design deeper. Now I had to hand drill through the center of the dowel rod because the drill was a little too wild for me to get it accurate. And for the Apex logo, I just had to use a smaller saw and cut out the general shape and then filed it down using a really small file. And then I just used the drill, I got a little braver, and used the drill to drill the hole. Now the last bead I had was looked kind of like a dumbbell and I just wanted one side of it so I cut off one side because I thought it fit the design that I needed. And I made sure to sand the side that I cut from so that there was nothing pokey and could cut the string. Once I got all the charms made I was ready to wrap the handle and I just used some leather cording for this. This one was labeled as toast colored. Then to start wrapping the handle I had to go around one time because it wasn't going to be quite thick enough to just go with the first weave that I originally wanted. Now to start the wrap on the handle, I just went around one time to help lock itself in place at the top. To lock it in, make sure you go over that very first wrap that you start with while you just hold it down with your thumb. Then I went around one more time to help really lock it in. Once I felt like it was locked in, I wanted to weave it through the big slit on the handle. So I kind of started doing a figure eight motion, going in one side, wrapping it around the next and going back through the center. And I did that about five times down.
And once I got about five figure eight movements done, I just started going straight around the handle, keeping it about as tight together as I could. Now I ended up running out of the cording about halfway through the handle, so I just ended up gluing that end down to the handle halfway. Once I got that first one glued down at the end, I just started a new one in the same way except gluing it at the start and then just wrapping it singularly around the handle. Once I got close to the bottom, I started doing that figure eight pattern again. Again, after getting about five figure eight patterns, I ended up just gluing the very last little bit down so that it wouldn't come apart. Now, starting the real wrap of the handle, I found the halfway point of the rest of the string that I had or the cord that I had, and I started with it on bottom, and essentially, I just tied a little loop around each time. So what I did is I put the right side under the left and then looped it back over and under the left one more time and pulled it tight. So it kind of just looks like the start of when you're tying your shoes. Make sure you pull it pretty tight, and then all you have to do is flip it over and rinse and repeat. So I put right under the left side, looped it back over, and under the left side again, and pulled tight. Now it may look a little funky at first, but once you get about halfway down or close to the end of the handle, it really starts to line up and look nice. Just try and keep the crosses at the same middle part of the handle, each cross. Once I had room for about three or four more crosses, I put a thin piece of thread at the bottom of the handle and I was going to just go over this with my next few knots. Once I got about three more loops, I threaded the bottom or the end of the cord through that little piece of thread that I put down there earlier and I used that to pull the rest of that cord, or not all of it, but pull it back up through itself and this is gonna lock it in place on the bottom. And I couldn't really grab a hold of it with my fingers, so I had to use the pliers. And once you get it through, just pull out the little thread, and then you can cut off the excess cording. Now to put the charms on, I used hemp cord, and I just threaded it through in a way that I thought looked pretty nice. I ended up going up through a couple beads and back down through those same ones to kind of tighten it up and hold the beads together. Here was the beading cord that I used for the charms. For the charms at the top, I used that same hemp cord and I looped it through that little hole at the top of the handle and I looped the hemp cord back through itself one time to kind of lock it in place. And for the wrap on top, I used that same toast colored leather cording and I just wrapped it around over the hemp, just in single layers. Make sure to leave the hemp cord poking through so I went under on my last loop with the leather cording so that it looked like the hemp cord was coming out of the middle of the wrap. And to lock that leather 
wrap back in place, I looped it through itself on the very last wrap and pulled it tight. Then I just simply threaded those charms on. This is where I used that dumbbell charm that I cut in half. And I put a knot on after that one to keep the little apex charm or apex logo a little separated from the beads. And then I ended up just putting a knot on the very end to hold all the beads in place. Then I just cut off the excess hemp cord that I didn't need. Last is just gluing the eyes in place. And I used Loctite liquid super glue for this because it dries quick. I put one little dot of glue and then put the jewel on top and really pressed it down with my thumb. I ended up using those same little like bedazzle jewels for the eyes. The last step I forgot before was just cutting off that excess leather from the top wrap. And there it is, the finished Raven's Bite. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought, any questions. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make, like I said. Bloodhound is my favorite character from that game. And catch me streaming on it too. Right now, uh, my Twitch handle is uh, dxdarkiiknight. XB, I'll leave that in the description below. I want to change it to Hail to the Hobbies though in a couple months when it allows me to. And yeah, catch me on there. And for the next project I come up with, hail to the hobbies.